Sometimes in Jekyll, it's useful to output data in front matter or collections or data files as JSON, so you can reference it in JavaScript. Uh, so I'll show you a couple of ways of doing this. We'll start by defining a colors array in front matter. And now I'll add some script tags. And we want to output this as a JavaScript variable, as JSON. Um, so I'll start by outputting page.colors. And then I can run it through the JSONify filter. And so that's going to output this array as JSON. So let's have a look at the output. And you can see we have this colors array now. Um, so we can reference all those colors in JavaScript. So in the second example, I want to output the title, category, and URL of all my blog posts. So I can't use the JSONify filter because I need to control what attributes are included. So we can build this output using Liquid. So I'll start by defining um, my posts array in JavaScript. Then I need to loop over all my blog posts. Um, I'll output an object for each blog post. And the attributes I'm including is the title, the category, and the URL. Then I can output the data for each item using Liquid. So this is post.title. post.category and post.url. The final thing I need to do is for all the items except the last one, output a comma here. Um, so I'll check if it's not the last item in the array. And if it's not, I'll output a comma. So let's have a look at the output. Okay, now we have our posts array and it has our title, category and URL for each blog post um, and each item has a comma between them and there's not a comma at the end. So when would you actually use this? Well in Katie Decora's 2016 Jekyll Comp talk on unconventional use cases for Jekyll, she created this demo of the locations of all the speakers at the conference. So I can hover over a country and it will come up with all the speakers uh, located there. And this is a Jekyll website where all the speakers are a data file which outputs to JSON and then JavaScript does the rest of the work. So here's the speakers data file. And you can see each speaker has the name, Twitter handle, country, and the title of the talk. So you could just have all this data directly in your JavaScript, but it just makes it so much easier to manage because you have one file where all the speaker data belongs and there's no other code. So it's very easy to add and remove and update speakers. This tutorial was brought to you by Cloud Cannon the cloud content management system for Jekyll. For more free tutorials like this one, check out learn.cloudcanon.com.